Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today we're gonna to talk about five gimbal heads, all under $400, and we'll get to it right after this. Before we get into the actual product review, I'm gonna explain a little bit about gimbals, how they work, and actually show you some of the differences. The way I'm gonna set this up, there's gonna be chapters at the bottom. So you can skip, if, if there's one product you're interested, you can skip to that chapter, you can actually skip all the way to the end to the conclusion. I'll kind of give you my, my summary on all of these, or you can watch the whole video. But this first section, I'm actually just gonna explain a little bit about the differences in gimbals and what you get at this price point. Gimbals start at around $100, and they go all the way up to, gosh, $1,500. So there's a huge range. But what separates a $100 gimbal from a $1,000 gimbal? I'm gonna explain a little bit of that now. Let me just start with basically two styles of gimbal. I've showed this gimbal on the, on the channel before. This is a very inexpensive, it's $100. I'll put a link down everything here, but I'll put a link to this at the, uh, at the, at the caption. And this is a side mount gimbal. So you put your lens in at an angle here, it tilts up and down, as opposed to a swing arm gimbal, which is what I'm gonna review today, but has a swing arm like this, and the lens sits at the bottom and cradles and goes back and forth. There's advantages and disadvantages to each. And in fact, some of them are hybrids that will have an, a, the ability to put a side mount gimbal here. The arm can be taken off or put back on, and then you can use it as a swing arm. So you can have the swing arm or the side mount. All the ones I'm gonna test today are just swing arm style gimbals. What separates these in terms of the way they're built? When you look at this, um, Movo, this is an inexpensive, it's a carbon fiber, but very inexpensive. You can find copycats of this um, on Amazon or anywhere, really. The bottom of this is one of the ways they save prices. They just thread it directly into the aluminum. Probably not the safest or best design, but again, it's a cost effective way to do it. I'm actually going to take this apart. I'm going to show you this horizontal panning, and that's the way these gimbals are made. They have a horizontal panning system. If you loosen this up, you'll see that it kind of swivels back and forth. And then it's got a vertical tilt that goes up and down. And again, some of them have the swing arm and some of them have the side mount. Basically, as you get more expensive, the components become better machined. Most of these operate on friction. So essentially, you're tightening this knob. It's literally pressing this rod into the steel structure in here. Sometimes it, there's plastic in there, so the part components are different, but it, it just puts friction on there and it makes it harder to turn or locks it out. And the same up here. Sometimes you'll get pieces of nylon like washers and as the, the tension tightens, gets harder to turn until it eventually locks out. A more advanced system could use something like ball bearings, and a really advanced system could use sealed ball bearings or even multiple sets of sealed ball bearings. Now, let me actually take this apart. This is kind of typical of a horizontal panning element in all of these. Most of them based off of friction, more tension here, just makes it a little harder to turn until it eventually locks out. But honestly, in all of these, the horizontal panning was about the same. There wasn't a big adjustment there. Now, I'm going to show you one that I've actually been using a long time, and this will give you a pretty good comparison in terms of quality. Now, this gimbal is made by Pro Media Gear. I want to make very clear, nothing here is an affiliate, nothing here is sponsored, nothing here was given to me. Everything that I'm going to review and talk about today, I've either purchased or is on loan. I want to thank B&H. They give me the ability to do this. They loan me the product. I send it back to them. Now, this is the one I've used for the last five years. This is uh, made by Promedia Gear. It's called their Tomahawk. It's designed versatilely to use on a ball head. So I can slide this into a ball head, use it on a tripod, or it's got another mount here that I can clamp onto a monopod and use it on a monopod or a tripod. And that's why I bought this because it's, to me, this is the most versatile piece of mounting equipment that's out there. It's one of the only pieces that has this L shape here that allows you to do both, put it on a tripod and a monopod. Now, the top of this, 
this is where a lot of the money is invested. How smooth can this get? Instead of using friction and just applying pressure, this is going to use a series of ball bearings inside, sealed ball bearings. And you'll notice the knob on this is oriented on the top. It's actually going to clamp down. I'm going to show you in just a second. As opposed to something like this. This is made by a company called Obin. I'm not reviewing this. This was actually given to me. I didn't want to review this one because it was given to me. Where you just tighten this. And it's just a matter of friction that's holding it in place. Now, let me take apart one of these gimbals in this price point. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to show you this is the Jobu Junior 3. I'll go ahead and pull this apart. I'm going to zoom in and show you a close up here. And you'll see it's basically just a hollow cavity. And as you put tension on the knob, it pulls things together tighter until it eventually locks out. When it's loose, it swings. I'll show you how each of these swings separately in the review portion. And now here's the Benro with a very similar design. Now this may be thicker aluminum, it may be designed and machined a little bit differently, but the concept is very similar. It basically just works off of tension and friction. As you tighten it down, it just compresses the parts together until they eventually lock out. Okay, so that's the Benro. Now, let's take a look at the, the Pro Media gear, because this one's designed a little bit differently. And this is typical of what you get when you step up. So when you step out of the two to $400 range, you may start seeing improvements in the design itself. It's a more expensive design, but it honestly provides better friction. So let's take a look at this one. You take off the cover here and you're actually gonna see those sealed bearings. And when you turn the handle, you'll notice that it provides a little bit of pressure on that, what I assume is an aluminum clamp around the outside, and then that pressure is slowly released, but the pressure is subtle. What that allows you to do is get a lot better control. So I unlock it, it's really, really smooth, and I can slowly and gradually add tension to this. And it works still, but it just keeps getting a little tighter and a little tighter. Now the advantage is I get a lot of smooth control over this, this vertical tilt. A lot of the other units don't really have that. I'll go back to this Obin, where it's almost locked out or not, like it's, kind of like this is locked and this is unlocked, but in the middle, there's not a lot of fine adjustment. Now, in some cases, that just means you can get there faster so you can lock it out quicker. But in other cases, you don't get the same smoothness that you might with something like, like this Pro Media gear. So with that said, again, everything here by B&H, thank you for, uh, for loaning me this. Some of this owned. The only thing given to me was the one I showed you earlier, but I'm not even reviewing that one. And everything here is going to fall between $250 and $400. I hope that covered a little bit about the gimbals. Oh, let me add one more thing. One of the things I did in preparation for this is I, I sent out a poll on Instagram. And one of the advantages of having a, a, you know, a decent size account on Instagram is I can get a lot of feedback. And I asked if anybody had ever had a situation where a gimbal actually snapped or sheared or broke. And I did get a few responses. I had about five or six people reach out and say, yeah, I had that happen. It, it actually just broke. It just snapped. In every case, it was an inexpensive, kind of like knockoff, ultra cheap, just super discounted gimbal, $100 or less. And so if you're looking at there, and I showed you the Movo. I, I showed you this earlier. It's a $100 gimbal. But I don't use this as an everyday, all my tripod hiking out in the woods. There are... I, I would not be comfortable putting 15 or 20 pounds on this and hiking long distances. I use this for a specific purpose because it's cheap. I can put it on a ground pod, take it out on short hikes. A lot of times I don't even put my lens on it until I get there. And that's fine. This, I, I don't worry about this breaking. It's right on the ground. If it very low risk, right? So I, I don't want to take a really expensive gimbal out into a salt marsh or in, uh, along a lake where it's really muddy. I don't want to do that. So yes, yeah, sometimes I'll invest in a cheaper product for a cheaper purpose. But when you do that, if you do that as your primary gimbal and you're putting a $5,000 or $3,000 lens on there, or in some cases a ten dollars or $15,000 setup, do you really want to chintz out on that $100 or $200? So try to get into this price point. At $250, certainly at $400, you're going to get a gimbal 
that I think you should be able to depend on by a reputable company who does this. It's not a knockoff. It's, it's not some third party. It's a reputable company. So think about that. Um, avoid the pitfall of just uh, of trying to go for that cheap, cheap, cheap gimbal that you saw for 99 bucks or 50 bucks somewhere. You will, at some point you get what you pay for. And I'd hate to see somebody lose that camera setup or break that camera um, because they just tried to save a few extra dollars. So I wanted to put that out there. Um, the results of my Instagram poll were almost unanimous. It was, it was everybody that complained about it or had an incident. It was on one of those really super cheap gimbals. All right. Before we get into each product, one more thing I want to talk about is just balancing uh, the lens onto a gimbal and, and what to look at, why it applies to, to what you might want to purchase. It's not just how to balance it. It should be balanced so that basically when there's no tension on here, it just rests in place and, um, you know, it kind of just sits in the middle. So it's, you got to move it back and forth. However, I've got a balanced setup, meaning I've got a heavier lens up on the front and a heavier body on the back. And because of that, it's kind of designed, this setup is designed to work with each other weight wise. However, when you've got a heavy lens up front, this is a 402.8, and I put my D500 on the back, all of a sudden it's front heavy. The front of the lens wants to weigh more and it wants to start to tilt down. The reason that's important is if you're working with a really small plate down here, the clamp rather, if this clamp is really small, could be in trouble. It may not give you enough room to move. The foot of my lens is of replaced. So I've got the Arca plate built in. You can add a plate underneath your lens foot. And if you've got that unbalanced setup, you're going to want a longer plate. Some of these gimbals include a plate. I'll let you know if they do. Some do not. So it may be an additional purchase on top of the gimbal itself. If you, if you've got that situation where you need a plate. Also, the, some of these will come with these bubble levels. I'll show you which ones do. There's only one that comes with a bubble level built in. Some tripods have it. It may be a big deal. It may not be a big deal, but it is something to think about if you're purchasing. It's nice to have on the gimbal, but it's probably not a requirement for most people, but something to think about as well. All right, I've got the Sunway photo on the tripod, but I'm going to go down there. I'm going to show you the close-ups and give you the specs of the Sunway photo, and then we'll cut back and I'll show you how it performed on the tripod. And first up, we're going to take a look at the Sunway photo GH02. Now, this is the entry level in terms of price point at $258. You'll see these nice, robust knobs. I really felt good in my hands. The adjustments seemed very easy, so the knobs felt really good. And this one had a load capacity of 66 pounds, which was at the top of all of the gimbals tested, but only weighed 2.2 pounds. You'll see here some knobs for fine control of tension. And then down along the base, you'll notice a brass insert. So instead of being threaded right into the aluminum base, it put a brass insert there, which is typical of some of the other ones as well. Now at the top of this, it's got a lockout pin, and this is convenient. It will hold the arm in place if you're either hiking or, or transporting it, or you're loading your lens on and off. That can be helpful. And then you can also release that. The base plate on this one was three inches long. Let's get it up on the tripod and take a look at it. Right off the bat, the construction, I told you, looked pretty good. And when I got it on here, I was pretty optimistic. The horizontal panning was really, really smooth. Like most things in this price point, you don't get a great deal of tension control. So it's locked and then it's unlocked. You don't get a lot of that in-between feel. When this one locks out, it's fine. It's got this little adjustment. Honestly, these little adjustments for fine tuning didn't create a whole lot of difference. So it's locked or you start to take the tension off and all of a sudden it's unlocked and it, and it happens pretty quickly. There's not a lot of fine tuning in there. Again, very typical in this price point, but not a deal breaker because this is what we care about and this is really smooth. Now, the, that's the horizontal. On the vertical, this is where I ran into problems with this one. As loose as I could get this, watch what happens. It was still really sticky. And if I turned all the tension off, like if I, if I dialed these off as far as they could go, it was still a little sticky. Not the end of the world as long as it's smooth, so when I took it out and I was shooting it, it's, it kind of stuck a little bit. It, it, it jumped. It wasn't swinging smoothly. Of all of the gimbals I tried, 
this is the only one that had that issue. All of the other ones had a real smooth action on this vertical tilt. So while it is the least expensive of the group and seems pretty well made and could be a great value, this was not the best in terms of the, the smoothness. So what matters more? Do you save $100 or $150? Or do you want something that's a little bit smoother and feels a little bit better in your hands? The other thing I will tell you about the Sunway Photo, I've used some of their products, by the way, mostly like Arca plates, uh, clamps, things like that. I've never used anything uh, on the expensive side, no tripods, no gimbals, no monopods, anything like that. Not a lot of reviews on this. So only two reviews on Amazon and I think two on B&H and that was it. So something to think about. Um, it doesn't get any poor reviews. There's just, there's just not a lot of reviews out there and it's a newer product. So that could be why as well. If you're value conscious, take a look at it for sure. If you can get away with this not being the smoothest thing in the world, then definitely take a look at it. All right, let's jump on to the next one. And now we're gonna take a look at the Suray. This is their PH10. So it comes in at just under $300. Has a load capacity of 33 pounds, only weighs 2.2 pounds. I really like the knobs. They felt really good in my hand. Uh, this one, those carbon fiber construction, you'll notice a very short profile. This one's only seven inches tall with a very short swing arm and a smaller two inch plate. Um, I like the way this one feels. Let's take it over, set it up, and we'll, we'll get a better look at it. Now, this, the Suray, and, and by the way, this is by far the most mispronounced name, I think, in photography. I may be saying it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. Um, you'll hear it pronounced all different ways, but I believe it's Suray. This was the most intriguing of all. Everything I wanted to review. This is the one I was like, I want to get my hands on this. It's made of carbon fiber. The design looked really good. Reviews on it were pretty solid when I looked online. It got a five-star rating on B&H with just four reviews, but had 35 reviews on Amazon with a 4.8 rating. And I thought, this is just, could be really, really good. So I get it on here. And I, I go with the horizontal panning and it's smooth, right? Tighten it up. Okay, a little friction control, not a ton, but in this price point, about what you can expect. Go to the vertical, loosen it up, super, super smooth, locks down well. Again, little friction control, not a lot, but but I'm really excited about it. I'm really intrigued by this low profile. And then this happens. I go to lift it up and I hit the, I bottom out. You'll see around here, my lens, the foot of my lens is actually hitting the bottom or the top part here. And if I were to move it forward, then the opposite happens and the front hits. So it could be the design of my specific foot. And there are ways around it. I can get a longer plate and try to work around that. But if the, if the plate is too long, it's not going to work. Yeah, I got some problems here. It's a shorter plate here. If my balance is off, that could be a problem. So the solution becomes to lift this up, which you can do, it's adjustable. But let me show you the design flaw in doing that. The fulcrum, I, th I think I'm getting this right, by the way, I'm not a physics expert. The fulcrum is, let's say here, the pivot point. If I look at the center of gravity on this lens, it's somewhere up here. It's almost even, but in this case, it's a little higher. With a side mount gimbal, side mount gimbal, the center of gravity is going to be on that pivot, on that fulcrum. Makes sense? With the majority of gimbals, the center of gravity is well below. So it's always going to hang, right? It's, it's below the center of gravity. So it's down here, it's going to hang. In this case, I'm moving the center of gravity up. And watch what happens. If I go up with this to compensate for that issue with the lens foot hitting, see, I can adjust it up. That's nice. But now the center of gravity is all the way up here. And even when it's balanced, if I were to tilt it forward, it flops. That is what happens with a tilt head. Tilt heads are designed with just to go up and up and down, back and forth, but your center of gravity is always over the pivot. So when it starts to lean, it goes. Same thing happens backwards. When it leans, it goes. So now I've cleared the lens foot, but I have this other problem. So is it a throwaway? No, I, I think the design is a little flawed, but the construction is really good. The weight is terrific. And there may be a place for low angle photography. So if you're setting up low, you don't really worry about going up high or tilting down low. You just need a little bit of tilt in here. And because of this lower profile, you're also gonna get a lower angle. You're gonna be closer to the ground. So if you're shooting a lot of low angle stuff and you don't need to be up in the air all the time, 
this actually could be at $299. This could be a great, great choice. But you've got to you've got to consider at least is that going to be a problem? Is your lens foot going to be a problem? And there may be other. I don't. Mine is a. Um, I think mine's really right stuff. Let me check. It's either Kirk or really right stuff. It's really right stuff. Um, maybe there's another lens foot that's designed differently, and, and it wouldn't be a problem. If you get it though, if you purchase this, I would immediately test it out and see if you're going to be comfortable with that and see how your lens foot performs on this specific swing arm. All right. So again, I think it could be a really great value. The price seems right on and it seems like it's pretty well made, but got that little problem there. All right, let's get on to the next one. I'll show you the close up of that. The third gimbal we're going to look at today is from Jobu. This is their junior three price point of $338 by far the smallest, lightest, but also has the lowest load capacity, only 12 pounds on this one. Weighs just a pound and a half, seven and a half inches tall with a two and a half inch plate. Very simple design, the knobs are a little smaller, the base is really small, but the action seems pretty good. But again, you'll see when I get it on the tripod, the size of this is, is different than the others that we're gonna look at. Before I put this on, I will show you, I didn't show you in the close up. Um, this one does not have a, a threaded insert. It looks to be threaded directly into this base. I don't know the material. I'm assuming this is aluminum. And I told you on some of the other, uh, when I showed you my Movo, how that was designed, probably not the best design. Uh, I will check, look in the comments below. I reached out to Jobo and uh, Jobo and asked them about this. If they get back to me, I will let you know in the comments below. But as of this, they have not. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this on. And instantly, as I'm, as I'm threading this on, you're going to see it's very small. Uh, it's the smallest. The base diameter is the smallest. It's, it's short this way. The swing arm, it's, just, it's very small. Here's, this was my biggest concern with this. The load capacity was only listed at 10 pounds. And if you read their documentation, they'll tell you it can hold 12, sometimes 15 pounds. So they're, they don't really lock themselves down on a weight. Similar problem to the other one in terms of the center of gravity. This one, not quite as bad. So you can see this one doesn't flop. So it's pretty close. It doesn't have the adjustable arm that the Sure had. So you're locked into this position. But I also don't have the problem with swinging this the same way that I had with the Sure. So with this one, I can get the, the angle up and down all the way. So a little bit of an advantage on this one for that reason. Again, just like all the other ones, no problem with the horizontal panning. The friction control on here, you know, there's a little bit, uh, probably more so than the other two. And then when you go to the vertical, I actually showed you how this one's designed inside. It locks out completely and then it swings. Not a tremendous amount of control in between, but a little bit. The friction seems pretty good. Doesn't have the issue of like stepping where it wants to stick. So yeah, overall, I thought this was pretty decent. $338, kind of in the middle of the pack of, of this group, but only a 10 pound weight capacity. Now, this is, I believe 12, this one's three, I'm up to 15 pounds in that range. I don't know how comfortable I am just, just having that. If you're shooting a lighter setup, a 100 to 400 on Canon, a 200 to 500, 5.6 on Nikon, there's a, plenty of lenses out there that are much lighter. So this could be a really good choice um, so we'll see. I'll let, I'll let you know how it stacks up to the other two and how it feels, but it feels fine. There's nothing really bad about it. It's just, it's kind of small and uh, a little concerned about that load capacity. So uh, it is an aluminum construction, unlike the last one, which was carbon fiber. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the next one. I'll show you the close up. We're going to get into the Benro and then we'll finish on the last one, the Sure. But let's get into the Benro. Actually, before we get to the Ben Roll, I do want to say uh, the ratings on this. Very good brand loyalty. So uh, I heard a lot of people talk about Jobu and really, really like the product. This one got a 4.9 rating on B&H with 38 reviews. So it had a lot of reviews. And on Amazon, it had 38 reviews at a 4.7. So people like this a lot. Um, it's very well regarded. One more thing to consider, and I do want to mention this. This one's made in Canada. All the other uh, gimbals are made in China. Does that matter to you as a consumer? For some people, it might. So I do want to make sure that that's, that's out there. This one is a Canadian product, a Canadian company, 
also manufactured in Canada. Even though the, I think one of the other companies might be an American company, um, their manufacturing for their product was done in China. All right, now let's get to the Benro. When we compare the Benro GH2 to the previous one that we just looked at, this one is much beefier. It's a bigger gimbal head. It's comes in at $374.95, has a 50 pound load capacity. At three pounds, it actually weighs twice as much as the Jobu Junior 3. It's taller at nine and a half inches, but it's a very simple design. This one's based off of the Wimberley WH200, probably the most popular gimbal head ever made for wildlife photography. The knobs feel really beefy. No real concerns here. When you look at the bigger diameter on the base, you'll see the stainless steel thread there. Um, and again, let's get it on the tripod. We'll see how it feels and if there's any concerns there. If you look at my monopod review, I, I did the Benro Super Dupa. I really, really liked it. I was kind of curious. I'd never used their product before. Kind of curious, is this going to be the same kind of impression? Is it going to be well built? And, uh, it, and, it, and it was. I really, really liked this one. So let's talk about this horizontal panning first. Real smooth. Again, all of these felt almost identical in this horizontal panning. The difference really came in how smooth the vertical panning was. You'll see this is much beefier. I mentioned this is designed off the Wimberley 200 uh, gimbal, which is the most popular gimbal ever made for wildlife photography. That one runs about $600. This one comes in at $375. So if, it's, if it performs similarly, you would think, wow, this, this could be a really good value. So I will do another review uh, where I get the Wimberley in here. And I will try to compare it back to this. But for this one, everything is under $400. I couldn't bring the Wimberley in at $600. All right. So horizontal is good. Let's talk about the vertical. Real smooth. It's got a little bit of tension control. So you can see there's a little bit of tension there. So this one had a little bit more tension control than some of the others. And then the lockout was really solid. There's no movement on the lockout at all. Almost, I didn't really have a problem with any of the lockouts. Um, a couple of them, if you locked it out, you could still move it, but you're rarely going to be in a position where that's the concern. The concern is, will it, if I lock it out, is it going to fall from here or with light pressure, will it fall? In none of them, I had that problem with. Um, the plate was was longer than some of the others, and all of the knobs were, were about the right size. So this one had no drawbacks. I really couldn't find a flaw with it. Um, so I think the the... The biggest thing I took away from, from the GH2 was it's just, it's just solid. It wasn't anything amazing about it, but there certainly wasn't anything bad about it. It's adjustable here, so if I want to raise it up a little bit, I can raise it or lower it. Again, the knobs were comfortable. The plate was large. The swing arm action was good. The horizontal panning was good. It's a little bit beefier than some of the other ones I looked at. So uh, quickly on the reviews, very highly reviewed product. Got a 4.8 on B&H with 63 reviews and a 4.7 on Amazon with 339 reviews. So a lot of people are using this. This is an older model. I'm hoping to do a, 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 the next price point up where I can actually review one of their newer models. But this is an older model. It's been around for a long time. And um, why would you discontinue it when it works? So the Benro GH2. And let's jump on to the last one. Now we'll take the close-up close -up look uh, at the uh, Suray. And last up, we've got the Sure PH20. This is kind of the big brother of the PH10. It's a taller version. Now, this is also carbon fiber construction. This is nine inches tall. It's got a 40 pound capacity, load capacity, only weighs 2.4 pounds. The plate length on this one's three inches, uh, similar in shape to the Benro, but different in a couple ways. You'll see this really large, easy to turn knob. I'm gonna show you that a little bit more when we get it on the tripod but the swing arm felt really good here. Um, but there are a couple challenges with this. We're gonna talk about those when I get it up there and set up. So let's go do that now. All right, and the last one is the Sure. This is the PH20. It's their kind of big brother to the PH10. They make what, another one called the PH30. It's at the top of the price point at 300, it just snuck in $399. Really smooth on the horizontal, really smooth on the vertical. I wouldn't say it's, it sticks. It's not, it, even at its loosest, um, it feels really, really good. So it doesn't stick anywhere. Felt really smooth. So are there any downsides to this one? Because on paper, this is a carbon fiber build as opposed to the aluminum build of the Benro. So if everything is smooth and this one's carbon fiber, 
why isn't this better? Well, a couple things you may not like about this. So when I read the reviews, I'll show you on the horizontal first. The action was really smooth, but as soon as you put tension on it, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. You can hear it, okay. So it's, it's actually rattling. Now, that's not a design flaw. It's designed with a sawtooth. So there's these teeth on the top and teeth on the bottom, and when they're loose, they don't touch. As you tighten them up, they start to connect, and then they fit into each other to lock it in place. So that sounds like a good concept, except when you don't have full pressure on, it's kind of awkward. It makes this rattling noise. And when you do lock it out, I will say this, it locks firm. It's by far the firmest locking in the horizontal position. But because there's increments, so if you think of these teeth or in increments, you may not get the position you want. So it's not an infinite adjustment. So if you're shooting something and you lock it down and you want to be just a little bit over, you can't move this a little bit. You may have to actually adjust your tripod just a hair. To me, that's not the end of the world. It's not that big a deal. I will tell you in the review, some people hated that. So to me, I don't know that there's a huge advantage to that. Seems like some people don't like it, but the advantage is when those teeth are engaged and they lock down, it makes a very solid connection. So, and again, when it's loose, it's loose and it doesn't matter. Notice the lock. I want you to notice how far my hand travels. About a quarter turn. Some people really, really like the idea of having a, they call it like a quarter turn lockout, where you can go from loose to locked, just like that. There's not a dial. As you get more tension control, sometimes you have to turn the dials more. And I'll tell you, like with my Pro Media gear, I showed you how smooth it is and how much I like it. But to lock it out, I've got to make several turns to get it firm and locked out. This is designed the opposite way. You're not going to get a lot of tension control, but watch this top one. It's now completely unlocked. A little more than a quarter turn, and it's locked. A little bit more than a quarter turn that way, and it's unlocked. This could be something that is of value. I like the way this knob feels, by the way. So I don't mind this quarter turn at all. Because for me, when I'm shooting, I'm either locked or unlocked. I don't need a ton of tension control. It's nice to have. The design sometimes feels a little bit better, but this may not be a deal breaker for me. You've got to think about whether this horizontal is going to be a deal breaker for you. Um, because I think some people it did seem to bother. But again, really smooth action carbon fiber construction. Really, really, I, I really like it. The plate's nice and big. It's adjustable up and down. The knobs felt good. Um, this little knob on here I showed you earlier. This one's a little small. I didn't love this knob over here. But other than that, that's really the only other negative about this. So uh, I'm going to actually come back. I'm just going to do a quick conclusion. I'm going to put one of them back on here. So let's see which one I decide to put back on. So I'm back for closing thoughts. And this guy's back. I put the Benro back on because in these closing thoughts, I thought if I was a consumer and I had to choose one of these five, which one would I look at? Now, budget could be a determining factor. So this is $150 or $125 more than the Sunway photo. If I was looking just at value, I would probably go with the Sunway photo if I was comfortable with the fact that it hadn't had a lot of reviews and it was a newer product. If I was looking for something, I just, I really needed a slam dunk. I can't miss. I'm going to spend a little bit more than the entry level at $375, not even the most expensive one here. I just couldn't find any flaws with it. So based off the reputation, the amount of reviews, not one review mentioned breakage, slippage, any problems with mechanics. I just thought this would be a really, really solid choice. Now, I do want to say it's not the only choice. I just think if, if it was me, this is probably where I would end up. Now, let me tell you a couple other things I would consider. If you're looking at a smaller piece, uh, this little Suray really intrigued me. I showed you the flaws. It absolutely has some issues. But if you're doing low angle work, I would probably, I would actually definitely look at this one even over the Benro because I just think it's it had a really nice design in terms of its height being short and compact, its strength is its opportunity. It's it's the fact that this swing arm is just so short that it presents some other problems. But for low angle work, I would definitely consider this. The Joe Who had tremendous ratings. If you have a very light setup and you want to save $30 or $40, yeah, there's no reason. It's quite a bit smaller than the Benro, 
But if you're looking for a smaller setup and you've got you've got a smaller lens, smaller body, lighter setup, um, there's no reason this doesn't work. And tremendous reviews and good brand loyalty. And again, if the if the manufacturing, if the country of origin matters, you could take a look at this. If budget was your only concern, I mentioned it's a little sticky, not as smooth, but I don't see issues in here that I think would cause me to say don't buy it i would be i would be careful if you're a heavy user if you're hiking a lot if you're going to lock your lens on here and hike and bounce around and move all over extreme conditions probably not the one i would choose but if you're a, a modest shooter you're doing light shooting you're not hiking a lot you're not going to put a lot of strain on this then this could be a really good budget option because i did like the construction um, overall and then the last one the suray that i showed you at the end the big advantage here was weight. Uh, it's a carbon fiber build. I liked this knob. I liked this big knob. Since we're not getting a lot of friction control anyway, it seemed to make sense to just have a quarter turn or you know maybe a half turn lockout as opposed to these, which you kind of screw around. Each of those was very similar in that way. So these half or quarter turn lockouts kind of made sense. Um, the one thing I will say about Sure is when I read through you know, just dozens of reviews. Uh, this was the only company that came up with service concerns. Uh, some of the comments might be like, I tried to contact them, they were late to get back to me, they weren't very responsive. So that's something to consider. Uh, I've only worked with Benro and they were very, very good in terms of customer service. I've also heard the customer service at Jobu was very, very good. I haven't experienced that. Um, but I, I have heard from other friends that have worked with them that they're really, really great to work with. So uh, a couple things to consider. So yes, there are options out there. Each one could make sense. There's not one single right or one that I would say absolutely no way. However, I think just overall from what I saw, really had no drawbacks, probably would lean um, with the Benro at this price point. So there's the, uh, the comparison. Now at the bottom, I'll try to fit it in here. I'm gonna put a graphic down there. This shows you everything I, I, I found. Heights, weights, reviews, some of my notes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review. I will tell you, I'm enjoying doing these reviews. Just like anything in life, there's a certain comfort level you get as you do more of these. And certainly I have a long way to go in what I wanna do, but I hope you're enjoying the reviews and I, I'm enjoying learning how to do it. If you've got feedback for me, feel free to throw it down in the comments or send me an email. Um, I do wanna get better at just these product reviews. I enjoy getting my hands on the product. I enjoy seeing different companies that I don't get an opportunity to do that. I do want to thank B and H. Uh, they were the the partner that allowed me to get this stuff on loan. Again, none of this was given to me, so everything's on loan. I have no affiliation with these companies, so it's great to just be able to tell you what I think without feeling obligated to anybody in any way. I always try to make these reviews transparent, so I hope you appreciate that part as well. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comment. If you own one of the products and you'd like to talk about it, whether it's good or bad, put it down in the comments. It's really nice to use these forums as almost message boards where others can jump in and get some feedback. I have affiliate links down there. They don't cost you any more, but they do help support the channel. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these, feel free to jump down there and uh, check out the links below. As always, I wanna thank you for your ongoing support of the channel. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.